G'day Starlo here. I've told you before about the old school method of using resin head jigs and squidgy flick baits to catch things like brim and estuary perch, particularly when they're a little bit tricky. Unfortunately, neither the squidgy resin heads nor the flick baits are made anymore. I've still got a few in my stash. But I've also told you about how my son Tom has been 3D printing resin heads. I'll put a link to that video up here above and also down in the comments below, as well as to one about how he makes them. Anyway, I've just got his latest batch and he's refined them even more. He's doing some wonderful things now with his 3D printing. He's got them on great Gamagatsu hooks. Yeah, sure, I've got this one in an old style squidgy flick bait, but they also work really well in things like the Wriggler. They work super well anywhere that the fish are in shallow water or sitting up fairly high in the water, particularly when you want the lure to arrive on the scene with just the smallest amount of disturbance and then sink quite a bit slower than a lead head jig. I'll take you into some snaggy shallow country this afternoon and we'll see if we can catch some fish on these resin head jigs that Tom made for me and both new and old squidgies. This should be fun. Keep watching till the end and I'll tell you how you might be able to get your hands on a few old school resin heads for yourself. Fishing a soft plastic on a resin head isn't a whole lot different to working one on a light lead headed jig. Cast it as close as possible to likely fish holding structure, let it sink, then jig it back. I like to use a combination of lifts, twitches and shakes of the rod while picking up slack line with the reel. Try to keep the lure in the zone as long as possible and don't work it too fast. Fish often eat these things as they're sinking or even while they're lying motionless on the bottom. Once it's clear of the prime area, crank it in and repeat. Keep doing this and covering water and I can almost guarantee you'll eventually find some action. Fish just love that dying minnow look of a straight fluke style flick bait rigged on a very light head. <laughs> it presses their predatory buttons. Of course, putting the lure in the right spot is more than half the battle. No matter how good your plastic looks, it still needs to be seen by a fish. You also need to focus intently on what you're doing and not get distracted by things like big bully mullet leaping out of the water behind you. This one, oh, bit it on the drop after a, after a twitch. Oh, he's a good brim too, he's a good brim. You just get that amazing tick in the line when they pick it up on the drop like that. Oh, he's a lovely big fish. Woken up now. I've got a lot of drag on here. Ah, well, there you go. Not quite as big as I thought he was. Looked big in the water. Mind you, pretty good brim. And there's that resin head. Just pinned in his lips there. In the right place and at the right time, that it is just the deadliest way to catch fish when they're really, really spooky. And not just brim, bass, estuary perch, trout, all kinds of fish. Ooh. I'll eat a plastic on a lightly weighted resin head. <laughs> Even though he's just in the lip, I'm going to need the pliers to um, get it out. These hooks are great. Look at that. A gorgeous fish. Alright, I reckon that might be the first of a few. Hopefully. Plastic's undamaged. Everything's ready to go straight back in. Tom's making these resin heads in two weights now, 0.75 and 0.66 of a gram. They're only light, but they cast okay. 
and you can't beat that stealthy delivery and slow sink rate in tricky situations or on pressured fish. I really fish these things with a lot of confidence. That's the spot. Ooh, that was a bite. <laughs> you won't pin them all, but if you don't prick them with the hook, there's a very good chance they'll come back for a second go. So get the lure straight back in there. Big this one. Still a good brim. Followed it out a little bit. Oh, just pinned right in the front of the lip. That came out so easily. All right, that's a couple on the flick bait. Let's try the wriggler on the resin head. All right, so I've taken the flick bait off and I've put a squidgy wriggler on there. I fish the wriggler a little bit different to the flick bait. Instead of the little short sharp rod tip flicks, I'm actually doing a, a lift drop, a more conventional lift drop with the, um, the wriggler on the resin head. Just to get that tail squirming. Oh, he picked that up while it was sinking. I never really got a decent hook set on him. Once you've had weight on them like that or briefly pinned them, brim are pretty unlikely to come back. But that doesn't mean there won't be others on the same snag. Got to get it right in there. Oops, there's a loose loop on the spool. I better pull that out and crank the braid back on under tension. Yeah, yeah, if you get it far enough in, that's where they are. Bit of backpedaling required. Oh, it feels like a good one. Yeah, it's a nice fish. There you go. <laughs> the wriggler on the resin head works as well. <laughs> Anything that doesn't have too strong an action, if it's got a really strong wriggling action, it can actually spin the resin head out and make it start to rotate in the water but a small tea tail or a supple curly tail like the squidgy wriggler goes just fine on the resin heads and of course any of the straight fluke style soft plastics and the sticks are all really good <clears throat> this fella couldn't say no to that slow sinking wriggler on the resin head Afternoon sun's not far above the treetops now. It's a good time of the afternoon. Look at that. Just pinned right in the peak of the top lip. And you get them a lot like that on the resin heads. Came out pretty easily. Got a bit of a sore on the side, this one, which is quite common on these black brim. It doesn't seem to do them any harm getting the odd sore. They heal up. Tends to happen more in um, in the summer months when the water's a little bit warmer. Look at that. Great looking fish. Alright. Stick with the wriggler and see if I can get another one. 
but not before a quick reapplication of that S Factor bite stimulant. I'm a really big fan of this stuff. Apart from masking human odours and contaminants like sunscreen, it really seems to make fish hang on to a soft plastic a bit longer, and that makes them much easier to hook. And there's nothing quite like the positive reinforcement of nailing a nice fish first cast after reapplying it. Oh, here's a fish. It was a snag. <laughs> that was so strange. It felt like a snag. I went to flick the lure off it and it came to life. <laughs> nice brim too. Oh, nice brim. Oh, he's playing up now. It was just rock solid. So I, I flicked the rod tip, hoping to bounce the lure off the snag, and the snag came to life. <laughs> uh, oh, that's a good fish. Another solid black brim. I'm running a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader here. I don't go much heavier than that usually on uh, brim, but in this kind of country, you need every bit of it. There you go. Wriggler on the resin head. Works like a charm. The wriggler's just starting to get a little bit torn up now. I'll show you a trick with that in a second. No sores or marks on that one. It's just a perfect fish. Pop it back in the water. Now, it's ripped that wriggler fairly badly. So, rather than just discard it, what I'm going to do is grab my scissors, cut a little bit off the nose, making sure to put that little off cut in the bottom of the kayak so that I can get it later. So I've cut a little bit off the nose and then what I'm going to do is turn the wriggler upside down. So the hook's actually going through a different track to what it was before where it tore. And I'm going to fish that wriggler upside down. It makes no difference to the fish or to the action of the lure. And you get another life out of your wriggler. How good's that? <laughs> Oops, that one went over a branch. I was a bit lucky to get it back so easily. Back up a little bit and fire again. That's better. Now watch my line closely. Oh, big tick in the line. I hope you saw that. That was a classic take. And this is on the rebirth wriggler. Oh, the wriggler's gone. It's come off the hook. <laughs> it was so torn up. But I got another fish out of it. <clears throat> oh no, it's still there. It's just slid down into the, the bend of the hook. Like a lot of fish, if you turn them upside down, they'll often sit still for you. For a little while anyway. Gee whiz, he's got it in. Oh no, it's coming out. Hmm. It's probably the smallest one of the day. Still a nice brim though. Okay, time to start pedalling back towards the car, but it's been a beaut session on the resin heads and a couple of styles of squidgies, old and new. Tom's finally gearing up to make a limited production run of these brilliant little resin heads now. They won't be cheap because of all the hands-on labour involved and the small numbers. But look, if you're genuinely interested in getting hold of a few, I'll post some details in the comments below. 
They're one of those bits of kit that you might not need very often, but when you do, nothing else will quite do the same job. <laughs> anyway, until next time, this is Starlo wishing you tight lines.